A Brief History of the Ancient City of Petra Jordan, Article History, Architecture and UNESCO World Heritage Center. Subscribed by my YouTube channel Golden Words. The Ancient City of Petra. The ancient city of Petra lies in present-day southwest Jordan. Petra became powerful and wealthy due to its location. In ancient times, Petra became a center of trade since it was located along trade routes that traversed Egypt, Arabia, and the Mediterranean Sea. If you've ever watched the movie, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, you have caught a glimpse of Petra, an ancient city carved out of rock cliffs located in the modern-day country of Jordan. Access through a narrow opening, the city is a breathtaking example of ingenuity and engineering that has survived the ages and continues to inspire and awe. Let's take a brief tour of the city and discuss its origins and the people who built it. Petra, Petra, ancient city, center of an Arab kingdom in Hellenistic and Roman times, the ruins of which are in southwest Jordan. The city was built on a terrace, pierced from east to west by the Wadi Musa, the Valley of Moses, one of the places where, according to tradition, the Israelite leader Moses struck a rock and water gushed forth. The valley is enclosed by sandstone cliffs veined with shades of red and purple varying to pale yellow, and for this reason Petra was called by the 19th-century English biblical scholar John William Bergen a rose-red city half as old as time. The modern town of Wadi Musa, situated adjacent to the ancient city, chiefly serves the steady stream of tourists who continue to visit the site. History of Petra, the Nabataeans, before they were conquered and absorbed into the Roman Empire, controlled a vast tract of the Middle East from modern-day Israel and Jordan into the northern Arabian Peninsula. The remains of their innovative networks of water capture, storage, transport, and irrigation systems are found to this day throughout this area. Scholars know the Nabataeans were in Petra since at least 312 BC, says archaeologist Zidon Almuhizen of Jordan's Yarmouk University. Almuhizen, who has been excavating in Petra since 1979 and specializes in the Nabataean period, says no one has yet found any archaeological evidence dating back to the 4th century BC. The earliest findings thus far date back only to the 2nd and 1st centuries BC. But more clues remain beneath the surface. We have uncovered just 15% of the city, he says. The vast majority, 85%, is still underground and untouched. Numerous scrolls in Greek and dating to the Byzantine period were discovered in an excavated church near the Winged Lion Temple in Petra in December 1993. Researchers at the American Center of Oriental Research in Amman, the capital, are now analyzing the scrolls and hope they will shed light on life in Petra during this period. Once Rome formally took possession of Petra in AD 106, its importance in international trade began to wane. The decay of the city continued, aided by earthquakes and the rise in importance of sea trade routes, and Petra reached its nadir near the close of the Byzantine Empire's rule, around AD 700. Visitors today can see varying blends of Nabataean and Greco-Roman architectural styles in the city's tombs, many of which were looted by thieves and their treasures thus lost. Today, local Bedouins selling tourist souvenirs hawk their wares not far from the place where Arabs believe Moses struck a rock with his staff, causing water to burst forth. The Architecture of Petra The name Petra is Greek for rock as such, Petra is literally carved in stone. It was carved out of sandstone cliffs, therefore, various colors of orange, pink, and red can be seen throughout the structure. Master builders were employed to turn Petra into an architectural wonder. Designs were created by hand and chiseled into the cliffs. The Great Jordan Temple is a two-story temple that shows elements of Roman architecture. Builders included massive columns and staircases. Other architectural contributions included classical statutes that emphasized Greek and Roman influences. Roads were created out of the canyons and cliffs. Petra, Aldair Aldair, the monastery, at Petra, Jordan. The Greek name Petra, rock, probably replaced the biblical name Sela. Remains from the Paleolithic and Neolithic periods have been discovered at Petra, and Edomites are known to have occupied the area about 1200 BCE.
Centuries later the Nabataeans, an Arab tribe, occupied it and made it the capital of their kingdom. In 312 BCE the region was attacked by Seleucid forces, who failed to seize the city. Under Nabataean rule, Petra prospered as a center of the spice trade that involved such disparate realms as China, Egypt, Greece, and India, and the city's population swelled to between 10,000 and 30,000. Petra, Roman Gate When the Nabataeans were defeated by the Romans in 106 CE, Petra became part of the Roman province of Arabia but continued to flourish until changing trade routes caused its gradual commercial decline. After an earthquake, not the first, damaged the city in 551, significant habitation seems to have ceased. The Islamic invasion occurred in the 7th century, and a crusader outpost is evidence of activity there in the 12th century. After the Crusades the city was unknown to the Western world until it was rediscovered by the Swiss traveler Johann Ludwig Burckhardt in 1812. Petra, the Kosna The Kosna, Treasury, Petra, Jordan Excavations from 1958 on behalf of the British School of Archaeology in Jerusalem and, later, the American Center of Oriental Research added greatly to knowledge of Petra. The ruins are usually approached from the east by a narrow gorge known as the Sik, Wadi al Sik. Among the first sites viewed from the Sik is the Kosna, treasury, which is actually a large tomb. Alder, the monastery, is one of Petra's best known rock cut monuments. It is an unfinished tomb facade that during Byzantine times was used as a church. Many of the tombs of Petra have elaborate facades and are now used as dwellings. The high place of sacrifice, a cultic altar dating from biblical times, is a well-preserved site. To support the ancient city's large population, its inhabitants maintained an extensive hydrological system, including dams, cisterns, rock-carved water channels, and ceramic pipes. Excavations begun in 1993 revealed several more temples and monuments that provide insight into the political, social, and religious traditions of the ancient city. The ruins are vulnerable to floods and other natural phenomena, and increased tourist traffic has also damaged the monuments. In 1985 Petra was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. See also Iranian Art and Architecture, Petra and Palmyra. Creating an oasis in the desert. Petra grew in the middle of a harsh, barren desert. So how did the ancient city maintain fertile crops, lush gardens, and even public pools for recreation. Petra's hydraulic system connected canals, cisterns, springs, and fountains throughout the city. The Nabataeans were experts at surviving in the desert because they knew how to collect and distribute water. An impressive system of rock-cut channels and underground water pipes carried water from permanent springs and seasonal streams. The Nabataeans also developed a way to collect and store water in watertight holes or cisterns. Hidden underground, these cisterns kept water safe from both evaporation and enemies. Rock-cut channels along the sick were used to carry water. The Nabataeans used underground cisterns to collect and store water. Controlling trade routes Petra began as a main stopping point for Nabataean and foreign traders. These nomadic merchants carried textiles, incense, spices, ivory, and other precious goods grown or manufactured in Arabia, Asia, and Africa. As the trade market grew, so did Petra. The Nabataeans controlled trade routes along most of the incense road, which stretched from southern Arabia through Petra to Gaza. Hauling heavy loads across the vast, barren deserts was hard and risky work. For a price, the Nabataeans provided shelter and water at settlements along the trade routes. They also charged tolls to foreign traders for crossing into their territory. All the profits helped pay for the Nabataeans provided shelter and water at settlements along the trade routes. They also charged tolls to foreign traders for crossing into their territory. All the profits helped pay for the Nabataean state, including the spectacular capital of Petra. Trade brought more than wealth and exotic goods to Petra. As traders from around the world passed though Petra, they brought new ideas and culture from places like Egypt, China, and Greece. Petra became more than a center of trade, it was also a cultural center of the ancient world. 
the Roman Empire takes charge. As Petra flourished, the powerful Roman Empire was expanding into the Middle East. The Romans were eager to expand the boundaries of their empire, and in AD 106 they took control of the Nabataean capital. It appears the Roman takeover was peaceful, and life in Petra went on without much change. But the empire left an unforgettable mark on the ancient city. The Roman Empire expanded eastward and took over Petra in AD 106. The distinct Roman style can be seen all over Petra, in the monuments, sculptures, public spaces, and even in the city's design. The Romans built new roads, like the impressive colonnaded street that ran through the center of Petra. Lined with massive columns, this long, straight street was unlike anything else in the city. Rome ruled Petra for the next 300 years, tying the fate of the ancient city to the empire. Eventually, Rome moved the center of trade north. The empire also turned to shipping by sea for much of its trade. This is a marble portrait of Aelius Caesar, the father of the Roman emperor, Lucius Verus. This Roman vase with panther-shaped handles was polished and hand-carved from imported marble, a stone prized by the Romans. Christianity comes to Petra. In AD 330, over 200 years after Rome took control of Petra, a radical event took place in the Roman Empire. The first Christian emperor, Constantine I, moved the main capital from Rome to the city of Byzantium. Rulers of this new Byzantine Empire wanted to spread Christianity. Rome moved its capital eastward to Byzantium in AD 330 to allow for more control over the eastern provinces. Over the next century, the people of Petra slowly abandoned their pagan gods for this new religion. The city's main cathedral, the Petra Church, was a dazzling symbol of this new era. Even a few once sacred tombs, like the Urn Tomb, were turned into churches. The city's power as a trade center had been falling. Trade routes were shifting north or toward the sea. In AD 363, Petra suffered another blow when a massive earthquake destroyed many of the city's buildings and its water supply system. This natural disaster marked a turning point for the Nabataeans. By AD 700, only a few people lived in and around Petra. Over time, the city was lost to the outside world. More than 500 years would pass before the ancient city was rediscovered by Western explorers.